Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm here in Paris. Uh, I was supposed to be taking a United Airlines flight from Charles de Gaulle out to SFO this afternoon, but uh, because of the crowd strike uh, slash Microsoft uh, outage that happened on Friday, flights were still being affected even today, Monday the 22nd. So uh, my flight got canceled. I will be on another flight tomorrow going through Washington DC and then heading back to LA so a uh, little bit of change of plans so this trip report will not be what it was originally going to be intended to be so uh, enjoy our flight from Charles de Gaulle in Paris to Washington Dulles <music> Good morning and welcome to Paris Charles de Gaulle International Airport. I'm heading back to the U.S. after my amazing river cruise with Emma Waterways. Join me on today's trip report and flight experience. I'm heading back a day later than I anticipated because my flight was canceled. Thankfully I was booked on flight 914 all the way to LA. And on the departure board, flight 914 UA is heading to Dulles departing at 1225 from gate 30 and is so far on time. This is one of my last trips with Star Alliance Gold, so I have premier access and I will be able to check in here. Thankfully, there's not much of a line since I'm here four hours. I have access to a priority line, but I didn't understand where I was supposed to go and I didn't see any signage, so I went to the regular line. I was then directed to go to the priority line and give directions, and I still had trouble finding it. I thought it was a good thing I got here early. Eventually, I saw a sandwich board directing me to the priority line and confirmed that was where I was supposed to go through. How I missed it, I don't know. Right now, I don't really see how this line is any faster or more special than the regular line since it looks like we're all grouped together. Maybe that was just for the immigration portion. As you can see right there, you see we're all mixing together. So there's a lot of walking and a lot of signage, and I still don't see where the priority line is or how it works. Eventually, I did see a sign pointing me to a separate line for priority access passengers. I confirmed that was where I was supposed to go. Here at the top of the line is a security screen. I think that's where the priority access comes into play. We'll see. So once I got to the front of the priority line, I was allowed through. Essentially, I was cutting in front of everyone in the regular line. But once I got to the safety screening, I was again mixed with all the other passengers, unlike TSA PreCheck, which does divide us. So there was minimal time saved. Good thing I got here early. And once you got through the screening process, you end up in the duty-free shopping area if you want to get some last-minute luxury shopping in. This is my first and probably only time in the foreseeable future that I'll see Iran Air. This morning, this flight is headed to Tehran. And passengers facing left are boarding a United flight to San Francisco, the flight I wanted to get on. And passengers facing the right are boarding the Iran Air flight to Tehran. The gate area here at Charles de Gaulle is so nice and colorful. These seats look comfortable and look like a nice place to hang out before your flight. I just wish the U.S. airports made the waiting experience nicer than what we have now and had nicer seats like these. I'll head to the Star Alliance lounge now for some breakfast since I left a bit early from my hotel and I didn't have time to have a bite to eat. My Star Alliance Gold status is with Asiana, so I have access to the lounge even though I'm flying economy with United. This lounge has a nice outdoor area and if it wasn't raining it would be a great place to sit down. Unfortunately there are no views of the tarmac or the runways. This morning there are a variety of breakfast items, a lot of pastries, some cereal, some yogurt, with some milk and jams and butters, along with some cheese and cold cuts. And they had an interesting combination of hot items, as it looked like they were making a transition from breakfast to lunch. They had curly fries, sausage, scrambled eggs, and pad thai. And there's also a nice wine area, so you can have one final glass of wine before leaving. 
There I decided to have a second serving of breakfast, and that's a more traditional looking breakfast that you would find here in France. Overall, I found the lounge to be very nice, as it wasn't too busy yet. I didn't get to show you, but from the inside, there were better views of the runway and tarmac. The service was prompt, and I found the pastries delightful. Of course, by the time you see this, the Olympics will be over, but there are still lots of merchandise for sale if you wanted to get a last minute item. And there's our plane serving as United 914. It's a 23-year-old Boeing 777-200 extended range or ER. It's registered November 223 Uniform Alpha. It was delivered to United Airlines in August of 2001. There are 50 Polaris Business seats, 24 Economy Plus seats, and 202 Economy Class seats. It arrived from San Francisco the day before as United Airlines 990 and spent the evening here in Paris. Would like to enjoy our personal flight and entertainment during the flight. Please download all the updates to your next app on your device before boarding the airport. We won't be able to download the app during the flight. Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs, je m'appelle Annie. Again, thanks to my Star Alliance Gold status with Asiana, I'm in boarding group one. There doesn't seem to be a lot of global services or premier Ks or pre boarders for this flight, so boarding seemed very quick and as much as I love being on vacation and being away from the States I'm quite happy to be headed home today after all of this madness. Welcome on board United Airlines 914. Here are the Polaris seats. So far what do you think as you've seen them? They look pretty nice eh? And here are the premium economy seats. They get less blankets and pillows than Polaris, but they look pretty spacious and okay to me. And here we are in the economy section, coming up towards my seat, which will be 41J, and aisle seat. I take the aisle seats for long flights like this, uh, because I like to get up and walk around. How unfortunate. Someone left their trash in the seat back pocket. So lazy they couldn't even hand it to the flight attendants before landing. And then there on the monitor, on the left side, you'll be able to see a USB port, which doesn't charge my phone very well. And then right next to that is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Plug it into either side, it doesn't matter, you'll get sound. And you can see that United Private Streaming is available for the seat through the app or the seat back. So there are the adjustable headrests. And you can see there's no lower back support at the seat. And then there's the legroom. It's exactly the same as the previous flight. 31 inches of pitch, 17.05 inches of width. And my backpack fits under the seat. And there's the plug where you can plug in your device and power it up that way, which is what I use to power my phone. And again, there's the seat from the side profile, and it will recline a couple of inches. That's the pillow, which is what I use for my lower back support. And then there's the thin blanket. It won't be too cold in here, which is nice. The overhead bins are a bit smaller than you'd expect for a 777. It's smaller than the 787 in my opinion. So take advantage of that space if possible for your carry-ons. And that's the view you'll get for the entire video as the passenger in the window seat have the shades down the whole flight. And there is the bulkhead seat next to me. Has a footrest and the monitor and meal tray pull out from the side. A passenger with an injured leg was seated in the exit row, but ended up having to be moved to the seat next to me here. Let us know if you need any assistance finding a place for your bag. We're here to help. And so now you're able to customize the IFE with the language and stuff. You see the flow of the flight, our departure, a meal service, the lights out, the lights back on, a snack, and our arrival into Dulles. Now a word from a flight attendant. Pleasant good afternoon to each and every one of you. Welcome aboard flight number 914 with service to Washington, Dulles. As you find your seat in the U.S. that you sell only those larger carry-on items in the overhead bin will first. All those items that you place at your feet must go completely underneath that seat in front of you, keeping the area around your feet clear for taxi, takeoff, and landing. 
So all those wonderful items at your seat must go completely under the eight hours and 18 minutes and we'll take off the landing. Should be fairly smooth all the way across the Atlantic. However, as always, the new board can be to the seatbelt on for your safety as well as those around you. Right now. As we arrive uh, on the East Coast, uh, there's rain showers and showers around uh, New York area. Okay. Just wait. Our route has put us uh, a little bit north, north, west of that. So we should have a fairly good ride across here, but we can always get a chance to see our So we'll keep your eyes on that. Uh, last, uh, our forecast weather for Washington Dulles. Mom, okay. Should be around uh, mid 80s, high 80s uh, on arrival time. No delays for us on arrival into the Washington area. What's in route? We'll give you an update. Arrival time, our most current weather. For now, sit back, relax, and we'll be on your way shortly. Welcome on board. device under a seat, ask a flight attendant to help find you. Please do not move the seat, as this can damage the device and its battery. We know that who you choose to travel with matters as much as where you're going. So thank you for choosing to fly with United. Shortly after takeoff, the flight attendants passed out some snacks. We're just beginning our long flight across the Atlantic, and I've got a long day ahead of me flying westbound to the States, ultimately to LA. So I had to keep myself hydrated with some water. And then about an hour, hour and a half into the flight, the meal service began. Meal trays pull out and you can bring it closer to you if you want. Some of the trays may have a bit of a downward slope so just be careful. And so we had a choice of chicken or pasta so I went with the chicken and it came with some chocolate truffles, a salad, and some bread and butter. And so the bread and butter always seemed cold and rock hard. So sometimes what I do is I put the bread and butter on top of the hot main. It helps soften the bread and butter a little bit. And that's what the main looks like. It's chicken with some sort of dumplings or pasta thing and some peas and carrots. So there is the salad. It looks like uh, some lettuce and I think that's either bulgur or quinoa or something. Anyway, that uh, meal was okay. Uh, the chicken was pretty decent, but the uh, pasta or dumplings I didn't eat because I didn't like the texture. And uh, I ate some of the bread and the butter, and I had a Sprite to drink. I'd say the Sprite was probably my favorite thing of the entire meal. 
I think next time I might go with one of the special meals. Uh, somebody had one of the, I think it was the Indian vegetarian meal, and uh, it smelled really good. And uh, I've had that before on other airlines, and that's usually a good choice. So anyway, that's my thought. And you can see we're still a long ways to go. And all the passengers were given a small bottle of water just like this. The flight attendants would pass out drinks a little later. Give you a quick tour of the restroom here in Economy. You see the hand soap, and there's the mirror, and there I am, representing LA. There's the little bassinet, and the toilet, and there by the door, up toward the top, there is the coat hook, and then there's some tissues, and that's it. So now we'll head back to the seat and take a quick rest. The flight is now just passing south of Greenland, but you won't be able to see it from this video. So let me share with you a little bit about the Game Center. There are three games right there. One is a flight simulator, which I'll spare you the trauma of watching me fly a United plane. And then you have Sudoku, which I play the most. And then there's Clear to Land, which again, I'll spare you the trauma of watching me helping an airplane land. Anyway, that's what is available if you download the app and some of those games that you can play to pass time. And so for an eight and a half hour flight, that's what we get. A disappointing pizza twist. Very bready and it was kind of chewy. Kind of reminded me of one of those microwaved hot pockets that if you overcook it, the texture is awful. We're only uh, about three to four minutes, and then we're going to be uh, on the arrival in Washington. Hunts around the ground, oh, heavy on the ground, uh, pretty much about on schedule, actually about 15 minutes behind schedule, on the ground at 3 p.m. local, short taxi, 8 Charlie 1, once we're on the ground. I do apologize for the uh, minor delay, it's just that the winds were not at the changes today, so um, I know you guys have a lot of tight connections. And with that announcement, we'll wrap up this trip report on United Airlines 914 from Paris to Washington Dulles. And so first, it was a bit jarring to wake up and receive a text saying my flight was cancelled. I wasn't expecting that since it had been several days since the CrowdStrike Microsoft issue. At least I was able to rebook myself right away for the next available flight. And at least I wasn't flying Delta and stuck in Paris for extra days. So this is a reminder to have travel insurance for cases like this. As much as I loved Paris, I was ready to go home. The setup at Charles de Gaulle for the premium lines was confusing and I wish the signage was better to point passengers eligible for the premium lines. The Star Alliance lounge was pretty nice, though the hot food items were interesting. The boarding was smooth and efficient, though we still departed late. The entertainment was okay, and this time the moving map was accurate with our route and destination. There was a small incident as one of the flight attendants spilled some milk on my jacket due to the turbulence. She was apologetic and cleaned up the mess. Thankfully, I was wearing a jacket that had been waterproofed, so the milk just rolled off rather than be absorbed. Food was generally disappointing, but I don't fly for the food. And don't even ask me about how bad the ground experience I had at Dulles was, especially in trying to get into the United Club. I did make it back to LA and was relieved to be back home with minimal delay. All that to say, enjoy our landing in Washington Dulles and welcome back to the United States. Since this is your first stop in the U.S., everyone needs to claim any checked bags and go through customs. If you're connected to another flight, you'll have to recheck your bags in the recheck area right before the exit and go through customs. Go through security again before the connecting flight. From all of us at United, our Star Alliance partners, this wonderful Washington, Dulles, and L.A. base in flight team, we've enjoyed having you as our guests in the friendly skies, and we do hope to see you again on another United flight.
Once the passenger seatbelt sign is turned off, please stand clear of the door area to allow your flight attendants to complete the port safety duty. Thanks for joining me on United Airlines 914 from Paris to Washington, D.C. Stay tuned for a little bit of extra analysis coming up right now. Originally, I was supposed to fly back to San Francisco and catch a Southwest flight to L.A. With the cancellation and rebooking, I would have been stuck in San Francisco and had to use the remaining credit from the Southwest flight to catch another flight. That credit wasn't enough to offset the last-minute high cost of a booking, but I found a hack that allowed me to rebook the flight to L.A. When I saw the rebooking options, the United app allowed me to book at another airport. I saw Santa Barbara as one of the choices and I rebooked there. After rebooking, I could still rebook and the option to book at another airport. And this time, LA was the option. So I was able to rebook onto United 914 from Paris to Dulles and connect with United 2276 from Dulles to LA. I almost didn't make this flight because when I woke up the morning of the 23rd, there was a notification on my flight was delayed. I tried to look for another flight, which was earlier, and I thought I found one and I rebooked it. I didn't realize until later, a couple of seconds later actually, that the flight was for the next day, Wednesday the 24th. So I tried to confirm my seat on my original flight on the 23rd, but the United app was showing that all the flights were full and there were no seats available. So what I did was I went on my laptop and went to the United website and I searched again and found my original flights, which was United 914 and United 2276. I quickly rebooked it and I decided I'm not going to mess around anymore. I'm going to head straight to the airport and just get checked in and hang out from there. So that's what ended up happening. And so that was it. That's my adventure heading back to the U.S. from Paris during one of the worst IT outages in history. So I hope you don't experience what I experienced. But if you did, remember to stay cool, stay calm, collected, and pay attention to the details so that you get home with minimal impact. All that to say, hope you enjoyed this flight and this experience, and we'll see you next time. Bye!